Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Today, once again, we are in jolly old England, where I am going to show you an amazing model truck. This is the Bedford OLB LWB O Series 5 ton tanker from MHAR. Now, MHAR is noted for making military vehicles, especially a really cool set of 135th and 172nd scale World War I tanks and figures. So today we're going to be taking a look at this amazing truck model from MHAR. And without further delay, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Bedfords were made by Vauxhall Motors Limited, Luxton, Bedfordshire. The Bedford O-Series chassis was introduced in 1939, just before the start of World War II, during which all industrial production concentrated on military needs. Here we have the Bedford OLB LWB O-Series 5-ton tanker from MHAR. This model kit is molded in 124 scale and includes optional decals for three liveries plus assorted fleet numbers and registration plates. Here we can see a built-up model of the Dominion Motors Spirit tanker and this one is really cool with the black grille and black fenders. So let's open the lid on this and see what's inside. Unfortunately the box is so huge that I can't show the sides. But there is a huge write-up on Bedford down below, which we will take a look at in the description box under the video. So what do we have in here? Well, we have some nice gray plastic parts in bags, quite a few, and a little mystery box off on the side. So take a look at this. Really neat stuff. Lots of detail in here. Wow, this is a cool kit. Don't usually get MHARs on here. I believe in this bag would be the glass. These look like the ends of the tanker. Ooh, look at the nice wheels and steering wheel. It's even uh, steering wheels molded with a little guard around there. That's pretty cool. Wow, this kit goes on forever. Nice frame rails. Everything is separate in here. This will be a really cool one to build. There's our decal sheet, which we'll look at at the end of the video. So just set that aside over here. And then we've got our instructions right there. And now let's slide this over and see what's in the mystery box. Ooh, this is really compact. I hope I remember how this goes back together. So we've got a whole bunch of little parts trees, which look like the top bits of the tanker. There's some ladders in there as well. And then we've got our tires in this bag. And last but not least, we have the cab, ooh, with opening doors too, all cut out, ready to go. So I will clear all this out of the way, and then we'll take a look at those instructions. On page one of our instruction sheet of the Bedford OLB LWB tanker, we see the Dominion Motor Spirit and Cleveland Motor Spirit truck. Now, what's interesting is that they both use the Dominion decal on here. However, it's in the paint colors that are different. So the Cleveland one is using more of a midnight blue and the Dominion truck is using more of a French blue. But this is what we have for page one. On the second page we see the BDA Bradford Dyers Association truck and here we have the decals for that. I do believe this truck is supposed to be painted red but uh, it does say, actually it says gloss Brunswick green on here and tells you what all the parts and pieces are that are supposed to be painted in these colors. The next page shows all our parts frames as well as the cab and the tires and it says that we're supposed to have seven of these tires. There is the glass as well and there is no chrome in this kit as we saw when we opened it so every part on here will need to be painted. To begin building our model we start with the engine block and here we have the left and right hand sides of the engine as well as the transmission molded as one piece and these will glue together and then you drop on your valve or cylinder head up onto here with the little cap on there and then we also have our intake and exhaust manifold which glue on the sides getting into the next step we have the front water pump up top and the timing chain cover down below and then here we have the generator, I do believe, as well as the coil and our air cleaner with the carburetor and the exhaust down below. Moving over to here, we have our starter motor being glued in place, our belts and pulleys and the fan. 
And then on this side, we get the coil, the distributor. This is an oil outlet sort of thing. And then there's this little cap here, which goes onto there. In the last panel, we had a pipe coming out of the crankcase of the engine. That is an oil overflow pipe. In case there is too much oil in the engine and the pressure builds up too much, it can drain a little bit of the oil down onto the road as an oil loss system. Now, moving into panel two, we have our frame going together. So we have the right and left hand sides of the frame rails and all the little cross braces that go in between. Now here it says to drill the two holes in on this side of the frame. This is the inside of the frame turned upside down. So then you would roll it over here and then glue in all those braces. Down here we have a four piece fuel tank. So you got the top, the bottom and the two sides which all glue together. And then that would mount into the frame as well. In panel three, you start to add the engine and suspension and drive line into the kit. So these instructions I find are a bit confusing because there's a lot of uh, upside downs and reverses and turning around and all that in the illustrations. So we just have to take a look at this and try to make our way through it. So what we have is the large leaf springs being glued to the front of the frame, then our engine being dropped into place. Now here we have a two piece torque tube and a universal on one end. So we glue the universal onto the end of the torque tube and then glue the torque tube in here up into this brace. Then here we have these brackets that are being glued here and here, as well as a bracket there and a bracket there. And here it shows the fuel tank being glued onto the brackets and how it fits onto the frame. Now moving this down, the frame is now rotated 180 degrees and we have our engine up here from this step. So just so we get a little bit of orientation here, there's our front axle being glued in place and the tie rods onto the ends of the kingpins of the axle. And then here we have our exhaust system with the muffler, which gets glued onto here. But now this pipe here is on this side because now we're at the front. There's our fuel tank being dropped in on those two brackets, which were up here. And then we've got the shackle brackets back here, and that would be for our rear leaf springs. Now, moving down to the bottom of this instruction sheet on page three, or step three, we now have a drive shaft here with three pieces, so a universal at the front and a universal at the back. And then we have our rear axle and differential, and this looks like the front cone of the differential, which gets glued to the universal here. And once all that is together, it gets hooked into the torque tube on the end. And here's our differential being glued together. So it's a two piece unit. And we have our rear springs being glued onto those brackets back here on the frame. And it says here to fill this up. So I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe put some putty on there and plug it. I don't know. If you've built this truck in the past, let us know how you liked it and what this means. Panel number four has an option. It says the kit has an option to build either with a chassis extension or without these parts. Number plate C32 and rear light C30 can be fitted at the end of the original chassis with the tab fitting in the slot on the chassis. If chassis extension is used, fit number plate and rear light at the end of the chassis extension. And then here it shows the options. Oh, you can make this left or right hand drive. For left hand drive version, use part C31 instead of part C32 and part C33 instead of part C30. So that's two English cars or English vehicles we have now that have your choice of either right or left hand steering. Option, cut tab off on the number plate C32 and rear light C30 because there is no slot on the chassis extension. So there is that chassis extension being added on and it's showing you how this works with the lights. And then here we have these side rails which go in and I do believe that's for the step to get in the truck, but we'll find out later. There's that option for the extension. So it's actually three pieces on that loop. Now here we have our battery being glued onto the battery pan, and we also have some more brackets being glued into those holes. And yeah, these bars, oh, and these bars are even three piece. There's the little end pieces on them. 
In panel 5 we see our cab going together and this one has the opening doors and it might not be too hard to hinge these with uh, some bent wire and a tube just carefully glued on the inside of the cab. But look at this, so you have your front windshield and they go into these holes. Then a little opening door on the side here, a little vent door. Then we have our main passenger and driver side door depending on if you're going to build this right or left hand side and the glass which glues in here and your option of putting this mirror in place and a door handle on this side and then we get the reverse on the opposite side of the cab and here we see our rear window being glued up in place and then our windshield wipers which were an option apparently for this truck and then down here we have our tire now here we have a beauty ring the tire and a Oh, this is for the spare wheel. So then there's the wheel itself, which glues into place. And I take it that this one doesn't have any backing, like the uh, ones that are going to be mounted on the actual suspension. Panel 6 shows more of our wheel construction here, as we see the multi-piece wheels and tires being glued together. And these are actually the dualies for the back that I'm pointing at. So we have our tire, our beauty ring, and then we've got the inner wheel, and then we've got the wheel for the dually. There's our rear tire for the dually wheel and then the rim going into the back. So it makes up a big sandwich. It says to make two of these. And then here we have the front and we've got our tire, a wheel retainer, the wheel back and the front wheel all gluing in together, sandwiching together. So again, I find with these things, it's better to leave this off and uh, put the tire onto the back. And that's so that you can glue this onto the axle and glue on your little ring instead of having this all sandwiched together and then trying to get glue inside there and align it and uh, just having a bad time with it. <laughs> anyway, that's my suggestion. Here's the spare wheel from panel 5 and it gets glued onto this three-piece bracket. And then the bracket gets glued into the back here between the springs. That, of course, is an optional it says option spare wheel location without chassis extension so there it is there now just moving this up a bit a bit more <laughs> okay so what we have down here at the bottom of the page is the front suspension and now we're seeing the pitman arm being glued up onto here for our steering and then down below it shows the wheels being glued into place, front and back. And again, the spare optional wheel going on here. This is with the extension, so it's going further back. It's not quite over the springs like in the previous image. Then we have that loop bar going in on this side. So there's the one for that side and the one for this side. And you can see they're different bars, but they're constructed the same. You've got the bent wire and then you've got the two brackets and that glues into one piece. Then here we have yet another little bracketed shelf step. So these would be the steps to get into the cab and that's what's going on there. So again, it looks really simple, but there's a lot of kind of back and forth in these instructions. So read them through maybe twice before you start building the kit. Panel seven has another option. So you have your choice of four fellow caps or three filler caps. It says, note, only discharge valves N3 are correct for filler caps N10. Filler caps N11 can be used either with discharge valves N3 or N12 plus N13. So that would be your numbers that we'll see later on here. So here is the four filler cap version, and you've got the four discharge taps down here. And uh, it looks like you're drilling out four holes in the top of the tank and the bottom of the tank, actually. That's one of the sides. And then if you're going for the three filler cap version, there's a three discharge tap. And then you drill three holes on either side of these tanks. That's K1 and K10 for both. In panel eight, we see more of that. So now we've got K1 and K10 being glued together. And now you've got your holes open for either three or four valves. Here they show the four valves. It says option, either L1 or L2 flat end caps 
or L13 and 14 domed end caps. So you got your choice there, either going with a flat tanker end or a domed one. So I could see, you know, if you want a few of these trucks in the future, you might need to buy one or two of these kits. So here we have the ends of the tank going on. And there's like a shelf or a step right here. And that is uh, going on to L2 and L3. And this, oh, that's with the domed end caps. And these are the flat ones. So the flat one is L1. The domed one is L14. The domed end tank is L13. And the step for that is L15. And on the flats, it's L2 and L3. Here we have panel 9, and it's showing the mounting brackets for the tanks being glued on. It says, do not mix up parts N14 and M7. They are different where they locate to the chassis. So be very careful when you're clipping these off the parts trees and gluing them on that you don't have one of these like in the middle or, you know, at the wrong end. It says over here, note the tabs which fit into the tank body on parts N6 and N7 are different lengths to achieve correct orientation. Assemble strictly in location and sequence shown here. One piece N6 and one N7 need to be drilled cut before gluing. So here it is there. Wow, this is quite the uh, truck. I've never actually built a tanker, and especially a Bedford tanker from MHAR. <laughs> so again, there's a lot to look at here. On one part N6 and one part N7, drill or cut the slot found on the flat non-riveted face to, f to form a slot on the rivet face of each to accept the tabs on part L4. Option. Drill cut one more location slot in part L4 if building the four discharge valve option. So again, you got to make sure you know what you're doing before you begin doing it. <laughs> so here it is. There's the bracket for L4 and all these other brackets. I guess that L4 is a cross brace. And it says to drill out your holes here and put all these in. So this is getting these bits level onto your tanker. So now if I just move this down to the bottom, it shows the ends. And it looks like you cut these pins off just on these ones here in the middle. And uh, yeah, cut off tab right there. And then here you've got the option of the four caps, and they're all being dropped down here. Actually, they're different caps. Look, N10 has the little spigot holes or whatever for uh, one version of the tops of the tanks, and N11 are smooth caps. So again, it's your choice which you want, the uh, spigots to hook all the hoses on it, or whatever is going on, or the smooth caps to open up and be one big hole in here for filling. Now over here in panel 10, we have the option for the four discharge valves. So here's what it looks like. You've got three, or sorry, four hoses going from the bottom of those caps, which are the N9, yeah, the N9 caps. And then you've got L12 here, which is one pipe, L6, L8, and L10. So they're lengths, 12 being short, six being a little bit longer, 8 being even longer than 6, and then 10 being your maximum length. And then here you've got the little uh, brackets which go on the ends of those hoses. So it ends up looking like this. And for the option of the three discharge valves, you have different hoses again. and But you do have these same caps, the N9s. So here we have L7, L9, and L11. So small, medium, large. And then the caps again, which are N2 like before. So this is how the three cap version would end up looking. Here in panel 11, we see the valves being glued onto the tank. So here we have the valves N3 being glued onto each of those hoses. But it does have an option here. It says, do not use these discharge valves with filler caps N10. So these caps with the holes up here are actually the N10 caps. N11 caps are the smooth ones from before. So here, that would mean that these ones would go on with the N11s. So right here, we see these special valves being glued together. So there's the valve itself and a backing plate. And then here, it's more like a cone, and the part goes into the cone. And uh, that is really interesting. So different valves for the different tops of the tanks. 
So moving this down, we can see our tank again. And here we've got the ladders being glued in place so that the worker can stand on the side. And actually, the lower type of frame here is for these long tubes. And again, that is to get rid of the cargo out of this uh, tanker, the liquids. So basically, you get four tubes, and two are going per side, as you can see on there. And again, this will look really, really cool once you get it all together. This is the ladder that goes across so that the worker can get hoses or whatever he needs to onto these little valves up top. Or, sorry, the spigots on the top of the tank. In panel 12, we start adding the fenders onto our truck. And here we have brackets, both front and back, for the rear fenders. And these will glue into the frame. And we also have a mudguard location onto the chassis, which it is showing. There's our other fender for this side. And then here we have the front fenders, and we have these nice little turn signal lights, or little light housings. They may even be driver's lights. And there's the back, and you've got a little lens that goes in there. And then these fenders will glue onto the frame. Now just moving this down to the bottom of the page again. We have the tank being dropped onto the frame next, and these are all locations where these tabs are going to drop into right on the frame. Panel 14 starts to show the construction of our interior, and what we have here is the back wall of the interior and a parking brake which sticks straight out, so this would be a pull-up affair, I guess. And then we have these wonderful three-piece front bucket seats, so a seat back, a seat bottom and a mounting plate and then we have our gear chef lever and this little bit right here which goes into that hole yeah goes into that hole <laughs> and uh, I am seeing this right okay so now we can move the instructions down a little bit right to the bottom and then here this looks like our steering column being glued onto this panel Oh, that's the bottom. Of, okay, yeah. so that's the bottom of the dashboard. And it does say you can make this left or right hand side. So I assume you could glue this over there. Unless there's another piece that we might find with the holes and whatever on the opposite side. Like a mirrored effect. So this glues up over on the top of the interior at the front. And then here we have our pedals being glued into place. Which, again, if you were building this right-hand side, they would be on the opposite. Or, sorry, left-hand drive, they'd be on the opposite. So, uh, there we have our dashboard being glued into place. We also have these B33 brackets, which get glued there and there. And then, way down here, we have... I assume this would be the windshield wiper mechanism, which gets glued on here. I'm not quite sure what these parts are, so... Hopefully you won't get too upset with me. But at the bottom we also have our uh, worm gear box being glued onto the end of the column. Panel 15 shows our ladder being glued in place. And remember that uh, little step thing that was at the end of the tank? I didn't realize it, but when you turn the tank upside down, uh, from how they showed gluing this on in that step there, it's the little platform here for getting onto this end of the walkway. So at any rate, here is our two-piece ladder. So you've got the uh, rod with the rails, which gets glued onto the handrail type of rod, and the handrail being up top here, not down along there. And then there's M2, which are the mounting brackets, which get glued here and here, which go from the frame to the bottom of the ladder. So once all that is glued in place, a UR worker can go up here and get on that platform and go across to check all the valves. Now moving the instructions down again. It's going to be a lot of that in this video. <laughs> oh, and I just stirred it up a bit. So what we have here is the interior being dropped onto the chassis. And then you're going to get that steering box and line it up with the rack and pinion and, or sorry, the uh, pitman arm. You're going to glue that onto the pitman arm and then you'll be able to steer your truck. Panel 16 shows our radiator assembly and here we have the radiator shroud and you are gluing on the headlights onto the side. So the headlights consist of a housing 
and the glass. And what it shows here is the glass going north and south, east and west, much like my illustration here. So there is the pattern north and south, so vertical and horizontal. And be careful not to get them off, like so they're sticking out with north way over here or something crazy. You want them to be perfect. So then you turn the radiator around and you glue the actual, or sorry, the radiator shroud, you turn that around and you glue the radiator into the back. And that's what it looks like from behind. Panel 17 shows our completed cab being dropped onto our interior. And it also shows our completed radiator being dropped onto the front fenders right in between these two slots. So it will mount onto the frame. And then we have radiator support brackets, which go onto the cab. And one goes basically straight back into this side, and the other crosses over into here, which is interesting that Bedford didn't make those brackets go out to either end of the cab like Ford did or some of those other companies did. But the uh, crossover is quite interesting to me. Panel 18 completes our truck with the side curtains for our hood, as well as the top of the hood. And the side curtains also have the hood locks down here, molded as separate pieces. Too bad they weren't in chrome. That would have been really nice. And then down below, we also have a splash apron, which glues onto the front of our frame. I do believe this could also be a bumper. Not too sure. Have to look at the box art again. And then here we have this rod being painted up. And I'm not quite sure where it goes, but it's part of the hood sides. And we have part A5, which looks like louvers being glued into place. So again, really interesting. Not too sure how this fits on here. What's going on? <laughs> Unless these are supposed to be glued into here. I'm not sure. It says number plate can be located in any suitable position, i.e. center or offside above bumper or below bumper. At the end of our instructions, we have a complete illustration of a finished version of this truck with the three caps at the top. And this is quite a nice drawing. You could actually copy this and then color it in either digitally or with pencil crayon or whatever you want to do and uh, come up with some really interesting paint color schemes for your Bedford truck. Now I did end up inheriting an encyclopedia on trucks from my dad and here it shows one of these Bedford trucks with a blue body, black fenders and red wheels which is a nice option if you want to paint it up like that. Now here we have another really cool paint scheme on an Atkinson truck from Preston, England. This is not a Bedford of course, but I do like the paint scheme of that British green and then the red on here. That looks really cool, but there is another one that I like as well. And that paint color scheme is much like on this Austin from Longbridge, England. It does look a lot like the Bedford, actually. But here you can see the black fenders and the black grille, and then the red wheels in that British green as well. So again, lots of really cool options along that theme. So how would you paint this truck? Black fenders with the green body and red wheels? or maybe a blue and a white or something, let us know down in the comments below. I'm actually interested in knowing what you want to do with this. Here we have our first parts tree, and this one includes our engine, as well as the rear differential and our rear fenders. And a lot of the pieces are really cool on here. It is uh, maybe a bit more simplified in the details as what we might see in some other models. But I do believe once this is all glued together, you might not notice that the detail is a bit soft. I could be a bit wrong. I'm kind of used to seeing like serial numbers in the side of engines or maybe names or letters popping up, something like that. But maybe the Bedford never had them. Look at that rear axle. It's got a nice little cover off the back with all the bolt patterns in place. And then the area where the drive shaft's going to be coming out of on the opposite side. Lots of little details on here, a bit of uh, seam lines going on, but not too bad overall. There's the windshield wiper blades there. So again, be very careful. It does have these little uh, 
bits apart tree coming up here and that's to protect the fenders which is really nice there are mold marks but they are located up under here in between the brackets so hopefully you can just easily file these off but whatever goes on the top will cover that off overall though the parts look really nice and are quite detailed our next parts tree includes a tank itself as well as an additional set of rear fenders so i do believe the other rear fenders that were on the other parts tree might be for one of the other trucks there is that ramp ladder that goes up across the tanks and we also have the side ladder and you'll notice there's quite a few tabs that we'll have to remove and clean this up same as the bars off the side again nice detail on here should look good once it's all together luckily for us all those mold marks are on the inside on this parts tree so they will easily be covered or even ignored so again really nicely done on the part of mhar this parts tree includes body panels as well as some of the interior components and it's got our front grille as well as the hoods with the louvers. Now one thing that is awesome about this kit is that the louvers are molded open and you can see here my fingers in behind as well as on the grill. So you don't have to open them up from behind or do anything special there because it's already been done. Oh look at that on the inside of the doors you've got an interior panel molding but there are mold marks in it which will need to be cleaned up. But overall, I mean, this is really nicely detailed in here. You can also see a bit of a grill on the back of our radiator. Maybe that goes, that heads toward the inside in here. So again, really nicely done. Look at that wonderful cab of floor in there. Cool stuff, isn't it? Art Deco, I guess it would be. And then look at the instrument panel. You could either do right or left hand side, just flip your gauges over in here, but uh, not bad. I got a little bit of a stress mark in here on the plastic. You can see it's a little bit whiter and on that top of the cone. Something might have squished it a little bit, like in packaging. So there's mold marks, but they're all sticking up on the inside of the hood, so it's easy to sand those out. Same as all the ones on these brackets. There are quite a lot of mold marks actually looking at it from this side, but I don't think they're too hard to get rid of using that uh, number 16 hobby blade. There are some on the inner fenders right in here, which might be a bit tricky, but overall, I think you can manage. Oh yeah, up front too. But yeah, again, again and again, really nicely done. I do love the open louvers on there. So I would recommend picking up one of these if you can. Our next parts tree includes our frame rails. And I do believe this is a universal one for all those Bedford trucks that are pictured on the front of the box. Because here it looks like we have a stake bed truck. Those would be the sides and then the back and the front. So again, it's uh, universal, I do believe. We also have these components, which I don't think we use in the tanker but we do use the frame rails there's the universals right there and we also have our gas tank so again you'll have to look at all these on the instruction sheet and see what we actually need and eliminate what we don't or keep it to your parts box look at those big leaf springs those are quite a deal heavy duty heavy duty I, well they would have to be on the tanker right because you're going to be filling it all with gasoline or milk or whatever goes in these things. Nice wood graining on these pieces. So if you need a stake bed truck for something else, that would be uh, where to use your sides or get your sides. Of course, it has to be for a big truck. It wouldn't look too good on a Chevy pickup truck. <laughs> It'd be quite huge. Maybe it would. I don't know. But overall, this is what you get and it does look great. Now this parts tree does include everything we are going to need for our truck, so I do not believe there's going to be any loss on this one for parts. But here we have the front leaf springs. We also have our wheels. And again, as you can see, they are all uh, molded with the holes going right through. So again, that is wonderful work. There's our big truck battery, as well as I do believe these are either steps or mud flaps. There's the front axle and our exhaust system with the big style truck muffler on here. 
all our cross braces for the frame from the previous parts tree, and our steering wheel, which is really well protected. AMT could uh, learn a lesson on that one. I've had a few AMT wheels where it's been bent. I mean, no fault of AMT, it's just how they ended up packaging the thing. Now here we have mold marks on the wheels again, so those would have to be cleaned up. But overall, not too many on the back. Just watch out for them and get rid of them. <laughs> oh yeah, those are mud flaps off the back. You can see the uh, names on them. Let's see, Bedford... Bedford. Is it Ferd or Ford? Or is it Fjord, like in Sweden? Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments down below. But again, excellent work for such a wonderful model. This parts tree includes the ends of the tanker, and you can see which ones are curved and which ones are the flat ends by the plastic step on the back. And what we have here is the curved one for the curved dome and the flat one for the flat end. And then all these hoses coincide with either the four caps on the top of your tanker, which would be here, or the three, which would be here. And this is the exhaust for this truck. As you can see, it's bent, if you remember. And then here we have that brace that goes in the center for the controls or the valves for these tankers. And uh, if you wanted the four, you also have to drill a hole in there. So let's just turn this over, take a look. Yeah, on the other side, it's got the opened hole. You just gotta, or the hole, you just gotta open it and drill it through. Again, the mold marks are on the inside of the caps, so that's easily uh, remedied by gluing the tank together. There is a bit of flash, or not flash, but a seam line that's going up on the center of the hoses here, and then little bits that you need to clip off and uh, shape the hoses on the ends so they're nice and round. But again, overall, this is really nicely done and it will look quite cool on your shelf. Here we have the mystery sprues from that secret compartment in the inside of the box. And what we have are the really long hoses and the brackets, as well as the more modern or smooth cap valves. And then we have the valves with the spigots on the top, as well as underneath on the tanks. Now, I actually have four bags of these. So uh, that would go for each of the tanks and the four caps. And uh, here's the other style valve, which is more like the one that sticks, I think, straight out or up and down. And then you can see the hoses there. Again, nice work. Maybe a few mold marks here and there. But overall, I think this is quite excellent. I'm going to say excellent a lot in this video, but it's true. Here we have the other two sprues that were in the mystery box. And these are the rails that are up along the side of the tanker where those long hoses go onto. We also have a whole bunch of those little brackets for the different curved rails and whatnot. And then the tank mounting bracket down here. So if you just take a look at the tank mounting bracket from the side, you will see the curve into the bottom of it. So again, you got to remember on the instructions where that went and how to do it properly. Here we have the cab of our truck, and it's got a nice ridge up the center of it, which is interesting. And there is a little bit here, which I think you have to file down and shape. Now here you can see we've got a single windshield wiper over where the driver would be. Interesting that they recommended a left-hand side on this when the cab itself is not really set up to be anything but right-hand side. There's a little bit of dust in here, and mold marks way down there in the top of the cab. But luckily with the doors removed, you can easily get a piece of sandpaper on the end of your thumb and just rub it inside here and get rid of the mold marks. You can also use that number 11 hobby blade to get down there. It's your choice. Nice belt line molding right along here. And uh, the sunken in panels down below, which added strength into that panel on the sheet metal. Love the opening doors. It even has a little lip in here to stop the door from swinging straight into the cab which is always the issue when you cut your own doors out of plastic models, is that you leave a big wide gaping hole and you need to actually get some evergreen sheet styrene inside there or something and make the hole just a bit smaller, just so that the door fits in without going straight into the body. But overall, I mean, this is nicely detailed for such a simple cab 
and will look good once it's actually assembled onto the model. Here we have our parts tree with the clear components, and it was really nice that MHAR put it in this foamy so that it wouldn't get all scratched up. And there you can see the headlights, and you can really see that pattern on there, the waffle pattern. And it would be quite hard, actually, with such a huge pattern to get it where they're pointing in the wrong direction. Remember, you're going north, south, east, and west, and that's how your headlights should be. And then here we've got our glass. The pillar is molded in here for the no drafts. So you would have to actually chrome plate it or bare metal foil it or even just paint it with uh, body color. There's the little lenses for the parking lights and turn signal lights and whatnot. So again, really nicely done and wonderful that it's put in a foamy where it's not really going to get damaged by getting scratched especially when it's doubled over like that. Here we have our tires for our 1939 Bedford. And I'm glad Danny the dog's not here because he'd sure love to chew these. These are nice and big for him to chew. <laughs> at any rate, there is no sidewall detail at all, but look at the nice edging on the tire itself. And you get this wonderful tread on here. And they're even like built the way tires would be built, you know. You've got the uh, hollow inner walls in here. So again, really nice stuff. It doesn't look like there's any seam lines running up the middle of these tires, like in the American model kits or, you know, any of those. So you don't really need to spin these tires at all. You could always just scuff them up with sandpaper around the edges, you know, just to uh, make it look like it's been on the road. But overall, these are really nicely done. Probably the best tires I've ever seen in a kit. Next up, we have the decal sheet. This is a moment you've all been waiting for. And just to add to that excitement and anticipation, they actually taped the uh, protective paper here right onto the decal sheet. So I will just have to remove that. Yeah, it's really got me all excited too, you know, because I want to see the color registry on these. So I got this time around, this pocket knife is from my father-in-law. It's a bit rusty, but it's actually a bit sharper than my old scout knife. Let's just take off one side of the paper and put that right there. Take a look at these decals. These are really cool. Oh, I see the uh, Cleveland Petrels and Dominion Motorsport. So you actually get three tankers on here. So Cleveland Petrels with this nice black logo. Cleveland Motor Spirit. This will look really good. So this one was supposed to be French blue. And then the Dominion Motor Spirit down here is supposed to be the dark blue. And then there you get your different license plates. And uh, here you get a whole bunch of decals for the side of the tank as well. Some neat little... Uh, not sure what they are, actually. And then down here you get the BDA. And this is for the other type of tanker. The Bradford Dryers Association Limited. Transport Department Bradford. And then more plates. And even the numbers 124 and BDA. So again, really nicely done. I really like the colors on these. And you could even use these decals on something else. Maybe even signage and just have a billboard or something. I'm not sure, but they are quite big and quite wonderful. One thing I just noticed here, this has copyright Bachmann Europe. So that is really intriguing to me. Do you think these decals were made from the model railroad company? Because they sure do look really good. And I don't know, maybe they are. Maybe they are part of a model, Bachmann model trains. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great video where I got to show you this amazing Bedford OLB LWB O-Series 5-ton tanker from our good friends at MHAR. Now, if you really dig this channel, why not consider becoming a member? Now, what's the difference between a member and a subscriber? Well, if you hit that subscribe button, you get to just join our channel. But if you hit the join button, then you will become a member and members are able to see videos weeks in advance before subscribers do, which is always a cool feature of the new YouTube for 2024. 
So if you want to check out some more great unboxing videos where you get to see more British cars, check out this video right here. And if you want to get some model car kits from our store, Monster Hobbies Online, click this icon down here and it'll take you to a direct link over to our cars. So until next time, everybody, happy model building and we'll see you in the next video.